We are talking about the most broken champion in the entire game. Do you want to see something insane? Look no further. What up team, it is Murder Rank. We are talking about the champion that has been number one in raid forever. Literally since release. And you know what's crazy? It's an epic champion. I saying that you already know who it is. You already know who it is. You can try to argue it's Duchess, Sifi, Krisk. Nah, nah, nah. It's going to be the one, the only seer. Epic champion from the orc faction. If you have her, you understand why. If you don't have her, you probably do know why. She is just this incredible champion. I stacked her gear and I'm going to show you mind-blowing damage. Mind-blowing damage. We're not doing anything cheesy with the clan boss. I know you can hit really hard with the shield and that rare champion, but we're just talking about the overall best because this is an AoE damage dealer. So it's pretty self-explanatory as to what she does. You stack buffs on her. She deals damage based on the amounts of buffs you have. Really easy. She doesn't scale with attack, HP, defense, which is really, really good for a champion like this because that just means you need crit rate, and that's it. I mean, crit damage helps, of course, but if you have enough buffs and most champions that give two or three buffs, I mean, there's hundreds of champions that can provide that many buffs, and that's just one champion that can provide the two to three buff ratio so you have a couple champions stacking up to four or five buffs you can one shot anything in the game quite literally anything in the game so what did i do we're here for maximum damage yes maximum damage i did videos like this a long time ago haven't done it in a very long time so we are min maxing to try and get the hardest hit possible we have stoke to fury i really wanted to use opportunist but I couldn't find a non-cheesy way to make this happen. Maybe someone in the comments can help me out here and figure out a way where I could have done this better, but the champions I'm going to be using are Lydia, Duchess, Battle, and Gurptuck. Of course, paired with Seer to do some mind-blowing numbers. Absolutely mind-blowing numbers on the first wave of Stage 10 Hard Mode Dragon. So, with these five champions, I don't think there's a champion that has four buffs on one skill. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could definitely be wrong here. I could not find one. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I could have overlooked something, but I believe three is the max. So I did in fact use Duchess who has block debuffed attack, perfect veil buff. I'm only at eight buffs across the board. So I am missing two buffs, but we are getting the Stoke to Fury Mastery which is going to be paired with Gurptuck's passive here because he puts poisons on, you get bonus damage here. On top of that, battle is going to go first, so it doesn't cleanse Gurptuck. And we're getting 20% additional or more damage as it's put here with enemies under the poison debuff. So, I don't know. What numbers do you think we're going to get? That is going to be the question here. So, and in case you didn't see the ridiculous stats on this champion, a 372% crit damage, 75% crit rate because we're using Bad El Aura, and the other stats, like I said, don't matter. If you can get this to 400,000 crit damage, we're looking at even better numbers. There are definitely people with better gear than I have, but let's take a look at what we're going to do here today. This is the kind of content I'm talking about. So we can just put this on auto, defense down and weaken, bam. Battle buffing the poisons here. More buffs. Now we have Gurp Tug. Okay, so let's take a, a quick tally right now. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The blessing does not count. Plus three debuffs on our seer, which is the Stoke to Fury damage increase here. We have the poisons from Battle, the passive from Gurp Tug working as well here. And on pretty much everyone, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Besides Duchess, who has three six seven total here now i could have found another champion that provides three buffs i could have put bad l gurp tuck and duchess in a immunity set which now that i think about it 
probably would have been much better for a higher number, but it is what it is. So on top of that, I could have put Lydia in a stun set and swap to the opportunist to try and get that squeeze out. I think it's 6% more damage here. Plus she's going to A1 as well because I kind of did think about the opportunist happening altogether. So now we're going to do the big hit. And we have to position the camera like just right here so we can see the numbers because they're going to happen fast. You ready for this? 3 million damage. And the higher numbers you go with someone like a seer, the larger the damage threshold is going to be. What do I mean by damage threshold? If you ever have a nuker in the arena, you know that. The nuker hits for different numbers all the time. That's because there's going to be a damage threshold per champion here. Now let's do this again. So 3 million was the highest we saw before. 3.6 million damage. 3.6 million. Now this is crazy gear. I get that. My point is I just want to kind of limit test to the best of my ability here now there's one other champion that was recently added to the game where you can do this as well which is going to be terrace he also does scale with buffs turvold is a single target champion who scales with buffs as well i showed him years ago in the clan boss and i think his a3 before blessings empowerment faction guardians he did like 1.6 million damage per a3 double hit which is nuts nuts in the clan boss but we're talking about an aoe champion here 3.6 million damage with the best gear i could find and the best combo i could find like i said there are a few min maxes and i maybe probably could have gotten to 4 million damage but 3.6 mil those are some numbers especially on an aoe level so while it's certainly fun to min max damage and show the best the champion can do we have to talk about more practical uses for the champion where pretty much everyone's going to be using it and on top of that what separates this champion from all of the others as if the a3 wasn't good enough with just the damage alone she also removes all buffs from enemies as well we didn't get to see in that showcase where i did the stage one of dragon but Moving into Doom Tower, where there are buffs rampant everywhere from the waves, and we all know how annoying a lot of those waves can in fact be, she now strips them, so this adds accuracy to the mix. Now normally, you would say, Murder, do you know how hard it is to build an accuracy-based champion in the Doom Tower? The requirements are extremely high. You are very correct, but remember, as we can see from Karma Burn here, damage based on enemy max HP, period no attack defense or hp needed so this turns into an accuracy based champion with crit rate and crit damage that's it so you need survivability crit rate crit damage and then accuracy we don't need attack to scale hp defense we just need the bare minimum for survivability and usually in doom tower teams you have other champions kind of boosting seer survivability letting you go more of a glass cannon on the champion itself here we also have an increased crit rate and AoE weaken. So if you were struggling with buffs, she has one AoE buff. That's not quite common, to be honest, across champion kits as it is here. And of course, as just mentioned, a weaken as well. Plus the A1 giving you a 15 up to a 20% chance of that extra turn. So it is possible you A3 on a four turn cooldown, then you A2, you A1, get that extra turn, and you are back to a 3 before you know it. Like I said, increasing this champion's value even more. Like they didn't give her enough. And I didn't even mention the part that the chance of placing a sleep increases by five for each buff removed. So it could be a 100% chance to sleep could be because like i said it's very rare where there's no buffs being added unless you're going first like i kind of showed you already but once you use the first cooldown unless you're resetting it and for the third wave it's likely you'll get a chance to be able to sleep enemies which is very strong as it is so there's just so much here this champion's amazing and again you can try to argue that there's a champion better than seer overall but the fact that she is she trivializes every single dungeon, like period. The fact that Lydia is a reward, where's Lydia? Lydia, 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 she's plus four now, just pulled a Visix. Thought it was going to be a bad void pull, but 
wasn't terrible. Strength and increased speed. There's two buffs there. Also defense down and weaken. Free champion. We call it free, but of course it's hard work to get this champion. Amazing pair with someone like a seer. And if you have enough buffs and your gears strong enough on seer, you don't even care about the 3%. Like, how does it get better than that? Ghostborn has been the go-to champion for being required to have 100% win rate teams. That changes with Seer for a lot of reasons, but I'm just going to show you in this run here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Buffs, buffs, buffs. Okay, 900,000 damage. So if we miss defense down, if we miss weaken, we're still doing hundreds of thousands of damage because of the buffs that are on these champions. Right? So we don't even care about 3% at this point. Because even if the worst thing in the world happens, we are still going to be okay because of how broken Seer's kit is. Now, I did a team a long time ago and I said, Seer probably needs a nerf for this reason. And then players got crazy upset. They started, I don't know. Players are much smarter now, so I can kind of explain this again and not get the same exact result because, like I said, the arguments were really, really stupid back then. And again, it was a massive, massive knowledge gap. So, what would a realistic kind of nerf for Seer be? Kept the buffs at six. So why does Seer need a nerf and why am I um, proposing this six buff limit here? Because it can be abused rather easily. Now, when I say need a nerf, is it ever going to get nerfed by Plarium? No. If they were going to do it, it would have been a long, long time ago because this is actually a champion that it's kind of bad for business. Granted, it's a void shard, so it's harder to get and they can probably get away with it. People are going to pull for this champion. If you do get this champion, you actually are going to spend less money in the long run. So this is one champion that lowers your spending significantly, and they either know that or don't care, so they're just not going to nerf it. But I showed a team a long time ago with Renegade, Gorgorob, Mausoleum Mage, War Maiden, and then Seer. And then Seer stats, I have the video up now, just so you can kind of see what I'm looking at here. These are Seer stats. 100% crit rate, 135 crit damage. That's nothing. 188 speed, that's nothing. 40,000 health, it's kind of a lot, but it's from mostly from the Great Hall that I had. And the rest of these champions, they're nobody crazy. Granted, it's a Renegade, a Void, rare, I guess you can say it's hard to get. Mostly a Mage, kind of unique, three buff champion. Gorgorob, increased attack, revive. We have no poisons though. So I'm, I'm running this team here, and you can just kind of see how we're just... I mean, okay, first of all, doing 200,000 damage with a team like this, with stats like this, is busted. This is why she is so good. And if they even didn't nerf it with the proposed 6 buff, this team wouldn't even be touched. That's just showing you how good this champion is. So we kind of go through here. We're at the boss in 30 seconds. Easy peasy. Right? You'd have to get lucky and you can swap quite a few of these champions around here. And the bossing is going to be quite slow. So just shifting forward here. It's a minute and 51 second dragon run. That's definitely not bad for early game. Considering there's only four six stars on the team. Only one of them has masteries. Which is going to be Seer. The rest are just AFK champions. Just chilling there. They have their purpose. Boosting turn meter. Applying buffs. And it is what it is. So that was a fun video to make. I know I made that quite a long time ago. And... Teams like those with Seer, those are going to be the best dungeon teams this game has to offer no matter what. Yes, Poison Explosion can have a very impactful role on the game, but Seer is just built completely different. If you have her, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't have her, you want this champion, period. So that's this fun breakdown of a video on the magnificent champion seer cannot stress magnificent enough here let me know what you think i'm curious to know and i probably will test this at some point can terrace the champion i pulled quite recently happy about that how hard can he hit in that same team tax all enemies damage increases by 15 percent for each buff on allies then increase the duration of ally buffs damage is based on hp so not enemy max hp 
So the scaling is going to be interesting for sure here. Now with the proper gear, I can definitely stack a lot of HP. This is nowhere near the cap of what this account can do, but I don't have all of my best gear in, in one. I'm currently working on spreading out as much solid gear as possible, making multiple champions very, very strong instead of one or two completely busted. It's just what I've been doing lately, but I am curious to test Terrace the Fierce out and see how he relates to Seer. Now, he is a Void Legendary. Seer is a Void Epic. Odds of getting Seer are significantly higher than Terrus the Fear. So to compare the two strength wise, you could do it, but realistically, the odds of you getting this guy unfortunately are very low unless you um swipe. Swipe quite a bit here. So that'll be a fun video for sure. I will do that at some point soon. Let me know if you want to see it, of course, and I'll kind of base it on the comment section. I think I can do some pretty strong damage with this guy. He's going to be harder to build because, like I said, Seer didn't need attack, HP, or defense. This guy's going to need HP. So it's going to be interesting to see for sure. That's going to conclude this video. If you enjoy content like this, just smash that like button, subscribe. Helps out the channel a ton, and I will see you all in my next upload.